what did you think, uh, how did it improve your game of Jiu Jitsu and joint locks uh, by working uh, with different techniques and fluidity, especially the fluidity? found that for a small amount of movement, there is a huge effect. So any fluid movement from one technique to another, it was an increased ratio of action. Yeah, the fluidity teaches you not just to relax your body and your mind so you flow, but it opens up a new door to do less movement, projecting less energy to get more. Because true jiu-jitsu is using balance and leverage. So if we use less movement, that means we have to use less energy to, do, to gain more control. So the fluidity teaches you to cut down on unnecessary movement to get to the to your goal. I wrestle with this age factor. I did ask a question at the last seminar about uh, injuries and looking after the body. Yeah. We, we had a, a presentation given to us when you were up the other end with the junior students and the lecture in uh, essence spoke about diet, all the sort of things we should be doing looking after ourselves. And, uh, some uh, bits of competitive edge about focus for training, just a little routine that we're doing in the end there. Endurance. This is an important question because we're all sooner or later getting older and older and older. We're not getting younger, we're getting older. When we were younger, we were full of energy, and if we get injured, we recuperate very, very quickly. As we're getting older, a lot of our injuries don't go away as fast. So the point is not, we're still gonna get injured a little bit, but as we get wiser and our technique is getting better, we will put our body in a position when we will get less injuries. Because if you get more experience and when you're training, you know that if the person is very stiff or something gonna happen, it's probably gonna happen to you because the way you position your body, you're probably gonna injure yourself. So you become wiser, Positioning your body to create less uh, joint uh, pressure in a certain position. Also, the secret is as we get older, some people say, Oh, I'm too old to train in Jiu Jitsu. That's the worst kind of excuse because as we get older, we need more exercise than we were younger because we're losing that life force energy in our body. So if we quit doing movement or exercises, we're gonna age much, much, much faster. So the secret is, yes, there might be injuries, but if we play, train smarter, uh, be wiser, if using better technique, the, and don't quit, keep doing jujitsu or exercises every day, you can feel you'll be healthy and strong. So don't quit, do, keep doing the routine, and just be more aware of the injuries and not just practicing jiu-jitsu, stretching at home. Yoga, meditation, something that keeps your body flexible. Because the secret to prevent injuries and secret to health is flexibility. So if we keep working with our body, stretching, meditating, so the body constantly loose, you prolonging you might be getting older, but you're not going to be saying, oh, everything is hurt. Yeah, it's going to hurt, but it's not going to be as bad uh, if you quit and not doing anything. So, and also, if you get injured, yes, it might going to hurt, but if you continue gently stretching two, three times a day, the injury will heal faster. And if you have opportunity to go to the warm water in the pool and do some range of motion exercises, water has an amazing First of all, to prevent the injuries, don't be stiff like a board and trying to resist. Yes, it's good when you're young, but when you get older, it's stupid because you're gonna get hurt. More flexible, stretching every day at home, doing exercises, and uh, water therapy, pool, swimming, movement, that will prevent a lot of injuries and will heal a lot of old injuries. So, that is it, as we're getting older, don't quit and just keep keep going, keep going. You will do less things maybe, but if you keep going doing, you'll be much more healthy. Much more healthy. Because the minute you keep doing, 
martial arts are laying there. Stop doing this. Stop doing this. And either you're late or something happened. You felt a little bit of a weird life is there and expected something happened in the family and you didn't train for a week. You're going to feel much, much older than it's in week. You're going to feel all your pains come back to you. So you have to do it every day. You're going to have to do a lot. A little bit of every day and you'll be healthy and strong. That's the secret. Yeah, this is a reminder of this. Awesome. How does it feel stronger than you think in your natural life? Depends how seriously, depends how really, what's your... See, it's an interesting question because I, I might say you don't have to be strong and fit and do martial arts. It's a tricky question. It's a tricky question. But in the real world, you meet somebody in the street, they also can be trained in martial arts. And if they're not as nice, and they also do weights and power training, and maybe they do some uh, maybe special uh, hormones that make them stronger. So it, it's important. It, it's very, very important. Uh, because it doesn't matter how good the martial art it is, you need strength and you need flexibility. You cannot. Whatever the old books say, when you get older, you become a better technician. Yeah, you are a better technician with age, but uh, you cannot. Uh, you, you have to have strength and technique. Strength and flexibility to do the technique. Without strength and flexibility, you cannot control and perform if you're defending yourself on the street. So, you need to be fit. You need to be fit. You'll be lying to yourself. If you know the technique and you do the technique and say to yourself, I don't need to exercise. One day that somebody attacks you on the street, they will be full of energy and you don't have an extra strength or extra flexibility or extra endurance because if we're getting older, our heart and our lungs are getting weaker. And we, if we grapple, you can, as we get older, you're going to feel instead of grappling for 5-10 minutes, you go 10-20 seconds and you, what happened? because uh, you're losing the certain endurance and uh, blood circulation that bring oxygen to the body. So you have to move it. Uh, it's reality. Training in martial arts, you're training uh, not just to defend yourself, but what if somebody will be stronger and better? You have to be fit. Yeah, and you have to, be, you have to push yourself uh, because what's the point of doing martial arts? You know, it's not just do it because you like to do it, but you want to be for self-defense point of view as well. It's very important as we're getting older or higher in grade, not to fool ourselves with the belt or the knowledge or a title that we're becoming so good or... There is always somebody better on the street, better technician, faster or stronger. So, as long as you remember this and keep training, you'll be okay. <laughs> how, how long, you should you say, in a street situation, how long should uh, a martial artist be expected to have to endure <coughs> a situation? Because quite often they're not going to just last two seconds and it's all dealt yeah. with. When you train in this class, you have to be able, realistically, in a class, if you go full grappling, five to minutes, non-stop. And a street can take five minutes or less. Maybe if you're lucky, 10 point seconds. What if it's not? Then you're in trouble. Because you're expecting to finish the fight 10 point seconds and the person takes you to the ground, you cannot escape and you start grappling or fighting and kicking and punching. Then it's not just the kicking or whoever is more than more endurance. Because you might be the same the skill level as you are. So you when you train in a dojo, you have to know what you can do, but you also have to know your limits. Once you know your limits, how far your body can push and go, then if, God forbid, you got in a fight in the street, if you know your limits, you know that if something happens and it goes to the ground, you better run or you better stick the fingers into the eyes and do something really bad because you know you're not going to last more than two minutes. And how many different types of martial arts have you trained? And do you incorporate into uh, I consider Jiu Jitsu a very complete art. But when I was growing up, I was born in former Soviet Union, so Jiu Jitsu at that time was illegal. So I studied wrestling and Judo to start with. I knew about Jiu Jitsu, but there was 
no available jiu-jitsu at the time when I was a kid. Uh, so when I came to the United States, I had the opportunity to, I was introduced to Goju Ryu Karate, uh, which is very beautiful art because it incorporates important principles. But, I, but the, at that time there was no jiu-jitsu where I lived. But when I moved to California, I found it and uh, I stick to it. But I study judo, karate, uh, but uh, jiu-jitsu is my, that's what I do. I'm a specialist in jiu-jitsu. Uh, judo helped me understand better jiu-jitsu. Even so, judo came from jiu-jitsu, but it helped me to progress in jiu-jitsu much, much better. Because they do certain things different. Karate taught me to respect and tradition because karate has a very important principle too. Each art offers important principles. So as you get older and wiser, you say, mm, this art is better than that. No, each art has its own place in the universe. It's like, you know, it spreads a, a wisdom through the world, uh, like a sand all over. So each, each sort of, uh, piece of sand has its wisdom. So it's different martial arts has their own purpose and place in the universe. Mm -hmm. And the more you open and uh, appreciate and see, like when I go and teach, I also observe. I, look, I observe what the students do, I observe what other styles of martial arts do. And as I'm observing, I take the knowledge and information and I say to myself, hmm, how is it going to work from a jiu-jitsu perspective? How is it the technique Will it help me to understand? Will it really work against fighting, or do I have to refine it to make it uh, so it will work for jujitsu? So, uh, you, the more you learn, the better. But in general, because I love jujitsu, jujitsu is as everything. You just have to see it. It has all the beautiful aspects. Time in training is important because you're acquiring wisdom. The more you train, the more you see the bigger picture, but also how much you realize with your head also is important. Because learning the technique is important, understanding, but understanding why it's important, and realizing, seeing a bigger picture, that's what makes you better than other martial arts. So when you train, try to ask why it's important. What happens if you move your body in the way? Will it work? So the more you ask yourself questions, the more you think about the art, the, the more you think what might happen and how can you improve your skill, the better martial arts. Mm -hmm. For some people, you do martial arts all their life, but they're stuck at a certain level. They don't self, they didn't do search or self organization They don't ask questions, they don't grow. So if you want to grow, always think. Think is very, the beauty of Jiu-Jitsu is intellectual and it's very great life. So the more you think, the more you analyze, the better you go. What was the point of all the different styles you've seen within Jiu-Jitsu or within the other disciplines of that matter? Because of uh, your worldly travels, you've been seeing a lot of seemingly different techniques that fit into a principle that you subscribe to. Now, what, what percentage of what you see in different clubs around the world would you say is different that's worth taking on? Uh, it's amazing how many different styles of Jiu-Jitsu exist and how different each country does their way of doing Jiu-Jitsu. It's just amazing. Because every time, yes. What do you from without polluting your style? Because there's probably plenty of techniques that you want to A lot of techniques and lots of ways of doing them. The reason there are so many different ways of doing Jiu Jitsu and so many different styles, each style adapts a certain teacher that works for his body. So, uh, I, when I was in Mauritius, it's the style that they do reflects the culture of the island. It's a, it's a culture in the art. When I was in South Africa, it was reflecting the isolation of South Africa, the same way they do things. Uh, and none of them were wrong, they were just different. But 
The style is a reflection of the teacher who is teaching that style. Their, his strengths and weaknesses reflect in that style. And if you can see it, that, uh, then, and if you know your strengths and weaknesses, you will make the style work for you better. And I met some teachers who are very good what they do, but their style is completely impossible to teach to somebody else because it's the only style works for them. So uh, you cannot say that style is better or that style is good. It works for that person or for that region or for that culture. It works, you know, but it's not going to work somewhere else. And what you embrace and what you say. What you say I always look trying to see why is it working for them and why it's not going to work for me. And if I was younger, I would criticize and say, hmm, they're doing it wrong. Now I'm a bit getting wiser and say, they're not doing it wrong, it just works for them. Um, probably martial arts always going to be different than this 100, 200, 300 years from now. It's going to be martial arts with many, many, many more styles because as people we grow, we realize new things, we change our body, strength, everything changes. So as long as it's working, it's great. Yes, there are some techniques that are very scientific. That's what I like about you. You do it correctly. It's very mechanical, very scientific. So if you take the science and mechanical point of view and you apply it, it will work most of the time on the person. Uh, so if you take just the technical part of the mechanical, you apply it universally, it will work universally with many things. And so the different culture just adds certain elements. Okay. Yes? So I just wanted to ask, um, what kind of like psychological benefits do you feel like uh, martial arts is given to you? And well, this is a serious question, uh, because martial arts, I always say martial arts or jiu-jitsu is a reflection of life. You, martial arts helps you to deal with the world outside. So the more you're in control of yourself and your mind, the more you can deal with the crazy world there, because that world is just as bad as Dojo is here, because business world or uh, it's very cunning, it's like, you know, when you go in the business, somebody will try to stop you so quickly because they're doing business too. So, if you apply the strategy what you learn in the dojo, for instance, strategy, like when you're grappling and applying business world, you'll be much, much, much better. Just, just learning the strategy itself, you can apply it in your life. Because of the martial arts, when I was doing all my life, I doesn't matter what life puts me in the situation, I just trying to be, you know, balance and smile, saying, okay, go pass, you know. You're more in control. Thank you, everyone. Um, we've come to a conclusion of the day. Uh, it's been an absolutely fantastic day. Um, I want to thank my sensei for committing his time to us here in Australia, in Melbourne. Um, it's just wonderful to have you out here every year. Um, we're hoping this continues a long, long tradition um, of involvement with the AJJF and, and DFMA and the other clubs involved with us. Um, it's been really great today. Um, thank you for your uh, uh, participation. Uh, you've been a great crowd, um, very easy, as, as always. Well done, Peter.